Andy, give me one second. Now you're fine. Sorry for being so unprofessional. That's the money machine, Andy. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to OT the podcast. We're here to talk about watches, time, and how to spend it. My name is Felix Schultz. Andy and Green. I'm Andy Green. Ah. Who am I? You're Andy, Andy Green. Green. Good morning. How are you? Very, very good and early morning, Felix. It is. Uh, it's like just before six a.m. Yeah, we've. Uh, well, it's a bit later now, but we were up well before the sun uh, for today's the crack, of the crack of dawn. Crack of dawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calling in from New York. Um, so yeah, on Friday. It, his Friday afternoon. So we appreciate a, a late Friday morning, a Friday Saturday afternoon call combo. So apologies in advance if we're a little uh, dusty, pre-caffeinated. <laughs> yeah, I don't normally I don't normally record with that with less than sort of four or five coffees in yeah. me. So uh, it was, but it was fun. Um, so and. We'll and get- are you, are you going to give us a little bit of a, a teaser as to who we're speaking to? Because this is your connect. This is your guy. My, my hookup. All right. So today's guest. He's born in Queens, New York. Mm. He works. Uh, he got his cut his teeth working in the Diamond District with his uncle. Yeah, uh, nice. He is a celebrity jeweler to stars and clients like Floyd Mayweather, Boom. Drake, Bo- Mick Mill. He designed Ariana Grande's uh, engagement ring. I didn't know that. That's a little, mate, we should have led with that. Why didn't you let me know that in the interview? My <laughs> God. He, he also he also had a minor role and uh, was an advisor for the film Uncut Gems, which you might have seen on Netflix. Yeah, now, that was uh, two hours of my life that um, is very, very traumatizing. The very stressful, very yeah. stressful couple of hours. Now, if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about uh, Greg Una. You know what? Before we get um the man on the phone, um, I think this we should maybe have a little bit of a break. <laughs> you just had a break. Uh, yeah, let's take a break. Uh, and, and then we're gonna uh, let's come back. But before we get him on, let's talk about. I want to talk to you. I want to pregame uh, diamond set and gem set watches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, so we're we'll back. Today's episode of OT the podcast is brought to you by eBay. That makes perfect sense. They do sell a wide selection of luxury watches. Oh, Felix, did you know that they sell Rolex every three minutes? Not just Rolex. You can find some amazing vintage and super rare watches on eBay. Yeah, so apparently they sold a Richard Mille RM11, which is the flyback chronograph, a while ago for 148000 US bucks. That is a serious piece of watch. And for our American listeners, they've recently introduced a new service. So if you've got the episode with Miles Fisher in it, you'll know all about their new US service, Authenticity Guarantee. Imagine I missed that one, Felix. What's the story? It's called Authenticity Guarantee, and it's where independent experts authenticate your luxury watch purchase so you can shop with total confidence. Okay, so how does it work? It's quite simple. Browse and shop eBay's listings with the Authenticity Guarantee badge, and when you buy an eligible watch, the seller sends it directly to a third-party authenticator. When it's there... Leading industry experts confirm the watch and collateral matches the listing description. They also perform a multi-point physical authentication inspection, attach a security tag to the watch, and then it's shipped with a unique authentication card. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Your item is delivered safely via two-day shipping with a signature required. Andy, do you want to know what's eligible? I do, Felix, I do. If it's a wristwatch listed at over 2K or expected to sell for over 2,000, it's included. Some popular brands and models are automatically included. Smartwatches, parts and accessories are not, and neither are customised watches. Do we pay more? No. Through Authenticity Guarantee, eBay picks up the tab on authentication as well as the two-day secure shipping from the authenticator to the buyer. Now, it is important to note that this is US only at the moment, but eBay are always looking to expand to global markets. So head to ebay.com slash buyauthentic to learn more about eBay's authenticity guarantee. With authenticity guarantee, there are no fakes, no fraud, and no doubt. And let's get back to the show. And we're back. Yes, Felix. Yeah, so uh, you know that I love a watch with rocks on it. I know you love a watch with rocks on it. Mm. Let's explore this, Andy Green. All right, all right, all right. So... Gem set watches, uh, we've danced around this topic, the topic of customization in a general sense, you know, with guests like the Dial Artist, which we can link up when we've talked about people like George Bamford. Uh, we have a very strong love for factory set diamonds, uh, but okay. to, does that extend beyond factory to aftermarket, do you feel it? Yeah, but I, I, look, I actually, I want to um, 
just highlight something to you. I think I've just sort of I flicked it to you in the WhatsApp. It's a, mm. this is a factory one, and this is yeah. I think one of the most impressive and interesting sort of factory gem set watches I've seen in a while. It's uh, it's on Horror Loops um, Instagram. Okay. It's yeah, yeah, uh, thirty eight and a half a Royal Oak Concept Frosted Gold Flying Turbion. So, mm. so it's a frosted gold finish, which is you know looks like gem set already, but it's uh, you know just clever clever hammer work. Um, thirty eight point five mil is amazing for those concept watches because yeah. have, have you ever tried one on? Yes, I have. I think massive. Yeah, big boys. But but this one, what I really like about this is it's sort of got uh, a turbion cage at six. And around that, it's got these sort of concentric circles in varying shades of blue. But the sick thing for me is that the tourbillon cage is hidden underneath like a, a plate of, um, you know, of diamonds. It's, it's a really wild looking watch. Um, mm. So we'll, I think we should link it because it's hard to sort of uh, visualize in a way. But what this, ex- what I'm excited about this is the thing that, factory gem set watches do that custom can't so custom you're sort of always working with a an established uh, mm. uh canvas i guess whereas this one it can change it like it would be really hard or like i mean you know we should have thrown out the challenge in the interview um mm. for someone like greg you know to put a something over over a turbine like that's a that's got to be done on the engineering or the design level i reckon what do you think? Yeah, yeah, you'd have to factor in sort of weight and gravity and uh, yeah. Too, I can't think about it this early. Anyway, we that's <laughs> that's a really good example of a factory uh, a factory piece. Um, I guess what Greg does is, in his words, he ruins he ruins these nice sort of uh, factory pieces. I, 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 he, he was a little more uh, a little more PG thirteen than ruins, mm-hmm. but sure. Um, yeah, push the, push the push the limits of our uh, explicit tagging. <laughs> Uh, we've we've gone we're, we're well beyond that, Felix. Yeah. Um, but but what I I guess on the the other extreme to paint a picture for the listeners is something like uh, you remember that concept watch that Champagne Papi Drake had. Uh, he sort of posted to Instagram. Uh, oh, the the, the Virgil Virgil Abloh from uh, Off White LV did. Yeah, it was only a render, like it wasn't a real watch. It might be a real watch now. This was sort of earlier this year, uh, if they went ahead with it. But it was sort of that Patek uh, Nautilus, the fifty seven twenty six, but it was black. <laughs> DLC coated with like a gazillion emeralds. emeralds. And that was through Mad, Mad Paris, yeah? You, I think it was yes. Mad. Yeah. That was cool. I don't, that, that was a... Um, Actually, yeah. no, I don't think it was. I oh. think it was just a concept. But it's not, yeah, it's not done, done. So No, I, but I think it was, yeah, uh, let, let's check. But I think that, that was one that got a lot of, um, uh, you saw it on all those like those Instagram accounts that are like, whoa, luxury lifestyle. Whoa, what's this? They've ruined this watch. Um yeah, I think that was a really. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Would you wear it? Yeah, it's it's a cool look. Um, I think it'd be really interesting to see how they would actually execute it. Like, if you look at the the image, it's. I I, I mean, I'm I'm sure that the guys rendering it up know uh, what they're doing. Mm. But if you can get that many baguettes on a bracelet, uh, amazing. Jeez, yeah, expensive. I mean, and that's it. I think I think the thing that I always uh, take away from. Um, you know, really highly stone set watches. I'm thinking, I think it was a Chanel watch. It was mm-hmm. the Chanel or show part. I think it was Chanel. And I think it I was the one you're talking about. And it was a full uh, diamond set bracelet. But the yep. bracelet, like the, the, it was elasticated, you know, like those, like those mm. speedle bracelets. And the engineering in making a, something you can wear every day or you can theoretically wear every day that won't fall apart, that will hold diamonds in, that's what blows my mind. Like the quality of the stones is great and it looks beautiful, but the work it takes to get something, you know. We saw that in Basel together, didn't we? Could have been, yeah. I think it was, yeah, if it was, yeah. If it's a watch I'm thinking of. And it was like 27 carats or something. something it, was, it was the uh, the Premier Camilla skeleton, I think. Mm, no, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a rectangle, it's a Chanel, it's. It's got um, it's a limited of twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got forty-seven baguettes. And yeah, like, it's a square one. So the, the madam. Oh yeah, I, got, I mean, we'll yeah, have yeah. to look it up. I think we've got it. I've got video of it, or you've got video of it somewhere. We'll have to. It's it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Um, no, I, fa- I found it. I found it. 
I found it on uh, on Google. It's the the bracelet has two hundred and eighty two baguette cut diamonds. Oh, that's it. That's the that's the boy we were talking about. So that is the uh, Chanel Premier Camellia skeleton. Yeah, and I think it was something like five million dollars or something crazy. Yeah, like I that. mean Chanel pricing. Um, so yeah, that's I mean that's that's what you can do with diamonds. So that's I think it's that. It's when it goes beyond that sort of uh, the conception that it's just about you know the, the superficial that I really like. Um, okay, so yeah. we've we, we've we both we're both on board uh, the the precious metal train. But what do you like about diamonds or what they do to a watch? Other just, than show off your wealth, I just said that. I literally just said that. I said it's the engineering and the 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 funny you know, like it's the uh, it's the design challenge. I think I appreciate because they're all, they're also super hard to work with. Like they're Mm. You know, you've got to factor in light. You've got to factor in something that can hold it in together. Anyway, it's uh, I'm, uh, that sounds pretty flimsy. I'm gonna gonna call you out on that. I think oh. you just think they look pretty and you like them. And I agree. That's part of it, but it's it's I like I like them. My love it's of the diamonds. Me. It's it's like an onion. There are layers to it. Yeah, I love I love um, like a good pave dial when you see that sort of hit like the sunlight and just the way that it reflects and sparkles and. Are we just big magpies with, with you know, <laughs> yeah. bigger well, brains? Well, I like the Pave dials. I like, I like something – I like a big bezel. I like big stones on mm. a bezel because it's you, you get it from all the angles. Anyway, I mean, <laughs> I think – I think at this point the listeners can tell that it's early in the morning. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, maybe, it is early. Um, maybe yeah, uh, maybe we should stop talking and get um, Mr. Yuna on the phone. What do you reckon? All right. Yep. Greg Yuna, jeweler to the stars. Uh, let's do it. Gee, they won't fit. The money machine. I need to buy myself a cake. Okay. You got to buy yourself a cake. A cake. I'm by myself. Yo, Greg. Alone. Like I'm by myself in New York. I don't know much people. Like I do my in my own thing. Wait, hold on, hold on, guys. I'm, I'm having a podcast with fucking guy Andy's on. <laughs> Andy, sorry. For me. Oh, good. Oh, good, man. Oh, good. <laughs> what sort of cake? Oh, uh, sorry, Andy. I'm fucking up right now. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. This is gold. <laughs> I'm on a podcast. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time, man. How's everything with you? How's it going? Last time we spoke was like five years ago. Yeah, it was a little while ago. You just went out on your own. Yeah. So we've been uh, we've been busy. Felix, who used to work at the magazine that we actually interviewed you for, he's uh, he's now the co-host. So we we do this together. Um, yeah, we're still buddies, even though we don't. Well, we, yes, we still work together. But I'm not your brother Felix. Anymore. How are you, Matt? How you doing? Yeah, I'm awake. I've got some coffee, so I'm I'm doing okay. Sorry for the for the for the for the trouble. Yeah, no, 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 and I'm going to have a kid. Just heads up for you. I might not have people getting cakes in the background, but I'm going to have like a five-year-old come in screaming at some point. So, Okay, so I'm going to have everybody on my side shut up. <laughs> everybody turn their phones off. We're good to go. Let's do it, man. So what are we talking about today, guys? We're talking, we're talking about Greg Una. Uh, you Like you mentioned, Greg, great to have you on the show. We spoke, it was four or five years ago now, uh, at that point, I think you had just gone out on your own or more recently. I want to hear about what you're up to. But before we get into that stuff, thank you for joining us. For those who might not know who you are, Greg, how would you describe yourself? I'm young and pretty. Nice. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm, 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 I feel like I'm a character. I don't know. Oh, you uh, certainly are. You, you are, Well, you're in the, the jewelry business. Mm-hmm. How did you get the, how did you get that start cuz didn't you start I, out in finance? I started I mean I was I was doing finance for a little while and then I uh, started jewelry business through some family. My mm-hmm. mom wanted me to go work for some family which I didn't want to do. And um, it ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me. Amazing. Amazing. And now you're not just you, you're not in the more you started out in the more traditional sense of jewelry but you Caught uh, caught my attention through, I guess, icing out watches, um, and you've you probably can be credited with the the more recent movement of that in the general sense. But I think Patek, uh, you're probably one of the first guys to start icing out Patek properly. I like. Can can, can I speak freely, guys? Of yeah, course. Can I speak? I speak. I like fucking the watches up. I like ruining them. That's what I do. I take a watch that somebody would look at and be like, "How can you even, <laughs> how can you even touch this thing?" It's like putting. Rims on a Lamborghini, right? Like, who would want to do that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's meant to perform the way it's supposed to perform factory. 
And what I like to do is just go left. And and what's your favorite watch to do that on? The, 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 mo the, the, most, the most rare and expensive shit that they have, I like to fuck them up. That's it. So if that's it. That simple. What's the um? What's the appeal of um? You know, fucking them up like that. What's the? What do you get out of it? I mean, did you see what they look like? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're walking nah. around with two ears on our arms. What, what kind of question is that? No, I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, most I'm people. Walking, I look like a fucking lightning bolt. And in, 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 sorry, am I, am I cursing too much? No, no, no. I'm just saying, um, I, I feel like the stuff that we do is 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 is, is so extravagant that it, it you know you walk in a room and it, it it literally it's like having a Superman cape on, you know, yeah. it changes, changes who you are as a human being. It makes you feel a certain way. So it's like uh, f for me to be able to build something like that, like it's like a superpower. Yeah, no, I agree. We Felix and I are both like tremendous fans of gem set watches. Yeah. Um, yeah, you walk into a dark room and you know you just light up the, basically the light. Everyone's looking at you. They want to know who you are. It's good for it's. I think it's it's great for advertisement. I think it's great yep. for if you want to be known in the city or you want to you know. I think it it, it definitely works to my advantage. You know, you walk yeah, in a true. room, you have all the diamonds on, you have, you know, people like, all right, who is that? What does he do? Is he a drug dealer? Is he like some <laughs> kid? Is he, uh, you know, a jeweler? I don't know if they think that, but, you know. You are quite the marketer yourself, though. You've kind of famous for, for a few things, especially on Instagram. Uh, one of them is those, uh, l those road crossing photos that you stage in, it seems like, record the, the, the time. Fixed, the fixed that photo shoots. Yeah. Yeah, those, they're those, iconic. Those, we started doing those. So I, so I used to take pictures of, um, so the lighting in my old jewelry store wasn't so good. Mm -hmm. So I'd come out into the street and, and, ah. and take photos of the the jewelry, and then you know very rarely somebody would like, hey, can I get a picture with you? Mm -hmm. So I would step out into the street and take a picture with them. And then one day, I was like, you know what, this would be cool if like they were themed. And it just started, you know, it started off, you know from some slow little photo shoot to this big production situation. How, how do you pull that off exactly? Like, is that just, you literally just go out and stop traffic? Listen, the light turns red. I have 51 seconds to get everything. Um, that's amazing. It. No pressure. And then, and then I usually wait till the light turns green. So we get that good traffic. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, kind of, kind of wow. streaming around you. And you've done some, you've done some with like other celebrities uh, in the photo shoots with you, like they've seen that and gone, I want in on that. So you, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's 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 you know it's 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 Manhattan. You know, it's a busy, busiest place in the world, besides Tokyo. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's 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 crazy over there. So, so when people see it, they're like, it's photoshopped. I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah, I had, I had to show them how I do it on 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 the Instagram stories. Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen video of you like rolling a bed out and just yeah, absolute, it's fun, absolute it's fun. Chaos. Yeah, Guerrilla marketing, it's fun. It brought some attention through. So, it, you know. Does the job. I was able to get my name out there through that. And you mentioned that sort of people used to stop you on the street. Has that changed since uh, Uncut Gems? Has uh, it increased? I mean, it's, it's pretty much been the same. So for, for the listeners that haven't caught that the, film. New York, New York is different. People don't really bother you in New York. Everyone's cool in New York. You know what I mean? The people come to New York to hide out and like, do you know, people come. You got these mega yeah, superstars yeah. from all over the world. They come to New York. No one knows who they are. No one cares. Yeah, Sam Felix and I get left alone here in yeah, Melbourne. That's, that's why we're in Melbourne. Yeah, it's the same. Hiding out. Yeah, they don't, they I don't go there, much. but you guys are too far, man. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. Like, Tell me about what it. What time is it? It's like 6 a.m., dude. Yeah. yeah, you guys on Saturday. On on Saturday. Talk to me, you guys are bugging. It's six a.m. on a Saturday. On a Saturday? I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, amazing. That's that. That that's that's it's kudos. Man. Thank you, thank you. It's a dedication. It's the. I remember when the, I used to work on Saturdays. <laughs> You got to start somewhere, you know. Tremendous cream, fuck a dollar I'm, dream. I'm, I'm, for, I'm just, I'm just busting balls. I'm, I'm forever <laughs> working, man. I leave work and I work. I wake up in the oh, morning, yeah, yeah. Saturday, the, the hundred text messages to the same question: How much is this watch? Jeez, yeah. All right, how, <laughs> how, how much is a watch from Greg Guna? 
Oh, how much is a, an AP? Uh, I mean, what are we talking? Are we talking about like the, just, you know, a, a nice that one? Yeah, yeah. Baguettes, I mean, anywhere from two, quarter million. Okay. Okay, quarter all the way up to? Uh, I mean, you go up to, f- with me, probably five. Hundred thousand. Five oh, five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Because once you get into the millions, that's when like the, you can you can get the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Is there, what's the craziest watch you've uh, you've played with? I'll be honest, and I hate to say it, mm-hmm. uh, the um, uh, Jacob, the jeweler, yeah. uh, co, uh, the the billionaire watch. Yeah, it, it's yeah. fucking sick. Wow. Because didn't you didn't were you involved in getting Floyd one of those? So I was, I yeah. definitely was. I was involved in that. I made that happen. Still didn't get my commission. I hope you guys are listening because I didn't get my commission. <laughs> but okay. Oh, they're definitely listening. Yeah. Well, it's all good. What I'm was the deal sure. there? Because I don't uh, think that's the only one publicly I know that's sold. Uh, I mean, the deal as far as what? How did you line that up? So I so I had a, I had a friend um, by the name of uh, Tadashi who's uh, from Japan, mm-hmm. and Floyd happened to be in Japan at the time. And he's like, "Hey, I'm in the same club as Floyd. Can you connect me with him?" So I reached mm-hmm. out to uh, a good friend of mine, which is one of at the time was Floyd's head security, mm-hmm. and I said, "My friend is gonna go. My friend is gonna show you a text message from me. Bring him to Floyd, please. He has some stuff that he wants to show him." So I made the cool. connection. And uh-huh. you know, pull the watch, and uh, you know, whatever. Well, but uh, yeah, before happens. that, before that, Jacob the jeweler um, is actually good friends with uh, my first cousins and stuff. We're all basically from the same culture. And mm-hmm. he, about four years ago, who was it? Four, about four or five years ago, uh, I had a chance to meet up with him in his home in Queens, and he was trying to have me pitch the watch to Floyd. Mm-hmm. So I did that, and at the time, Floyd wasn't interested. Okay. When so. he wasn't interested, Jacob the jeweler uh, was also not interested. So I saw the kind okay. of person he was. Not my, he's not my kind of guy. That's all. I'm not saying anything right, bad right. about him. No, he's just you sure. know, not my kind of guy. We'll read between the, we'll not, read not between the lines. You know, he's a different kind of shark. So sp- uh-huh. sp- speaking of uh, other big personalities in, in, in watches, have you done any um, Richard Mills yet? I have. Oy. Oh, that was something you said years ago when we first spoke that you, you would never touch. I mean, I, just, I don't trust them. I don't, I yeah. don't touch them for myself. Like I would never, uh-huh. I wouldn't buy one for myself. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, you know, this is me just speaking on how I feel. I just feel like, you know, there's no real heritage there you know i don't know how long it's going to be a thing yeah. they're cool yeah. they're, listen, they're cool they're cool they're they're great fucking they're built amazing yeah but i just don't know i don't know if it's a if it's a trend or it's going to be a thing i'm, I'm still trying to figure that out so before yeah. i invest yeah. my real money into it yeah interesting interesting on, on, on the popcorn. on the uh, on the hard work and the the marketing and you just briefly talked about floyd mayweather i think that is a really cool story of sort of how your friendship and kind of professional relationship with him started i off the top of my head i feel like he bought a chain of your neck but if you're happy to share that story i'd love to hear how you first connected with floyd the first time i met floyd mayweather was the first time it was like i was working my first month in the in the diamond district and it was the first time that they left me alone in the booth <laughs> so oh, when no he way. walked as soon as he walked in my heart started i'm like oh sh- i just literally finished watching a pay-per-view fight you know, this is before I had any kind of money. I was charging my friends 10 bucks to watch this fucking fight. <laughs> like, Yo, guys, give it up. 10 bucks, everybody. A week later, Floyd Mayweather walks in. You know, my heart's pounding. I'm like, he definitely hears my heartbeat. <laughs> you know, and I didn't even know how to deal with a guy like that. You know, I'm like showing him one watch at a time. And he's looking at me he's like, where's the other guy that was here before you? And I was just like so uncomfortable and embarrassed. But we, uh, we, uh, we became friends really fast. Because mm-hmm. I have a big mouth. And uh, did you make the sale? Not that day. Not that day. Tell mm-hmm. me about the. Tell us about the. Because he bought a chain off your neck. My memory. My memory so is faded over the years. He was asking for, about some other guy, and I was really upset because I was like, I was a fan, and yeah, yeah. he was like, 
where's, where's, where's the other guy that's here? And he wasn't really talking to me. So I was kind of like upset because I was so excited and he didn't really give me the um, attention that I wanted as a, you know what I mean? I just, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan. Yeah. And um, I left work that day, like, fuck him. I'm upset. <laughs> like, this is bull. This is like one of my idols. Like, I'm upset. Never and then the next time he came in, I was like, I swear to God, I'm never talking to him again. I'm not going to say a word next time he comes in. He came in. I didn't say anything to him. I'm minding my business. And I just finished making these um, rosary beads, Jewish rosary beads. Uh-huh. And he comes in and I'm giving him kind of the cold shoulder because I'm just like pissed off from the time before. And yeah. Yeah. the moment he asked me a question, I'm like, if he says anything to me, I'm not going to say shit to him. <laughs> Fuck him. Right? As soon as he says, yo, I like your necklaces, I'm like, oh, shit. And, you know, I automatically, you know, caved in because I genuinely love the guy. You know what I mean? I lo- I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I, I, I love him. I genuinely love that dude. He's the fucking best. And you and made a few sales since, right? Didn't you do like a 34 carat diamond? Um, I've done a lot. We've done, we've done a lot. We've done a lot of stuff with him. You know, he's, he's been a very good client of mine. Uh, you know, we, we've developed and built a, a, a great friendship. You know, he checks in on me sometimes. He uh, helped me out with my, you know, he always told me to leave the place that I was, where, where I was before. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know what? You don't need to be with these people. You can go do your own thing. And, you know, you don't need anybody. And I was always, you know, I always respected him for that because I guess he saw something that I wasn't, that I didn't see in myself at the time because I wasn't confident. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the moment I walked off, I told him, like, listen, I left. I'm on my own. I have no fucking money. I don't know what the fuck to do. He's like, I'll be there in a month. Okay. And for me at the time, a month is like, what, what, what do you what do you mean a month? You know, like, you, you know, but when he came, he, he you know, he, he's, he, he uh, showed definitely showed a lot of love. That guy is, is one of the reasons um, I'm in, you know, my position. Where you are today. Yep. Absolutely. So for, I will forever be grateful to him. So you've got, you know, uh, I imagine you've got access to a whole range of watches and there must be sort of all this stuff moving through, you know, your, your life in a store. What do you wear on the daily? Like what, what do you sort of grab and, you know. Just... I just got a new watch. What did oh, you get? Tell us. I got, so I got. Believe it or not, I got a 36 millimeter, the, 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 the factory with the turquoise uh, and the diamond dial, the Roman numeral diamond dial. The, the day, day, date. Date. day date. The day date, the 36. Nobody likes nice. the 36 anymore because no, I think the females look at me wearing a girl's watch. No, 36 is no, where no, it's no, at. No. No, it, they're, they're, it's, it's just so classy, you know, and, and I never thought that I would wear a 36, but it's just, it's, it, I fell in love. I'm in love. And that's a you know, yellow like, gold, yeah? First two weeks. What do you say? Is that yellow gold, yeah? Yellow gold. Yellow gold. Sorry, what, do you th- what do you think? Like, everyone in watches is all about rose gold, rose gold. Like, I like every- gold. I, you know, I like to match up stuff with, like, my skin tone. Yeah, okay. Mm. So rose gold sometimes on me is not, you know, depending on my tan. Uh, uh. Yeah, su- summer maybe not. Winter you can yellow pull it Yellow gold is good and white is just sexy. Yeah, cool. Yeah. This is a pretty rare piece you've picked up, though. Like, I don't think I've ever seen the turquoise... It's so, it's so pretty. It's just yeah. it's just different. I like that it's different, and I know they're gonna go up. So I I, I grabbed it as soon as possible. Well, you've just hyped them completely because yeah, they're really <laughs> you, special. I think you posted like six photos. To I'm in Instagram. love. I haven't been in love with yeah. the watch for so long, and I just I know this. I know this is one of those pieces that's gonna be 120 grand in you know in 20 years. Question for you. Question for you. Uh, being in the game of customizing things, do you think that potentially? Uh, Stone dials could make a make a bit of an appearance in. That, in well, that's, I'm here, that, 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 that's my job. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to yeah. I'm here to set the trend. So this Ooh. is the new trend. I'm, 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 you, listen, why, just the, the thing is, I I don't want to toot my own horn. You know, sometimes uh-huh. it's arrogant and whatever. But they're watching me, and I, yeah, I know yeah. that, you know I know uh, you're gonna start seeing them around. Love cool. that. Love, Love that. What do you think I, of the, the new I started doing things on purpose. Like, you know how I do, like, the brush gold stuff with all my pieces? Mm-hmm. I started playing with that. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to go shiny. Let me go brush. Let me just see if, they, if they'll mm-hmm. follow. You know, they, they follow. Of course, they you're, follow. The, you're the, uh, the leader in the field, I think. Mm-hmm. Who, who do you think uh, – who's up there with you? Because I know 
uh, you and Ben Baller. Talk I, 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 listen, th- th- there's so many great jewelers. I mean, Elliot Aviani right now. Uh, um, sorry, Elliot got it right now. I think he's mm-hmm. fucking on fire. He does some great work. Uh, ben is one of my favorites. His shit is super clean. Good friend mm-hmm. of mine. Um, you know, Aviani's a good. Um, you know, you got the Eric's. You got you know, they're, they're, they're out here. They're out here. Love it. Okay, so one thing I mentioned uh, briefly before you your un- uncut gems with Adam Sandler. You had a bit of involvement in that. Uh, yeah. What was that like? Something different. I mean, I'm in a movie with Adam Sandler. Yeah, that's, that's the you know I grew up watching this guy. You know, I mean, it's different. It's weird, you know? And it's on a subject matter that was obviously very close to home. He sort of. You know what the, the problem is that everybody thinks jewelers are like that. The thing is, it was a movie about a, a about a chronic gambler that happened to yeah. be a jeweler. You know what I mean? Like jewelers are not running around. It, it made us look bad, and that's not what we do. You know what I mean? That was just a dude that had a chronic gambling problem. You yeah, know? sure. It. I gotta say, it was one of the most stressful movies I've watched in a, in a really long time. But my really, eyes from this movie. really good. What did you think with the final product aside from the representation of? It was Jules? different. It was different. The Safdie brothers, they know what they're doing. You know, they they they, they did their thing. It, you know, it, watching Adam play somebody else was weird. Yeah. You know, the ending was, you know, different. I didn't expect that. First time you see Adam Sandler die in a movie. Yeah. Before. Well, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's a hectic film. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. On oh, Netflix. So. You are a busy man. Aside from movies and, and the customization side of things, you've got chapter two. Yeah. So chapter two is, you know, when I left the place. That, where, where, so when I left where I was, um, I didn't know. It, it just happened so fast. I didn't know what to do. So I'm like, you know what? This is a new chapter in my life. It's going to be chapter two. I ran with that name for a little bit. And then I elevated it to, you know, Greg Yuna is my name. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's my, you know, that's my Top tier stuff. And the chapter two, I collaborated with M Jewelers and we do, you know, some plated. So it's, you've obviously got a a really huge social following and a customer base, but you've got those, you know, those top end celebrities with bottomless pockets. And then you've got fans that just like the the content and the work that you do. How's it been received by those guys sort of giving them something more affordable? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm trying to give people a low hanging fruit where they can buy into the company and feel good. You know, like, listen, jewelry is expensive. Yeah. We all know that. I'm not here to bargain with anybody. I'm not mm-hmm. here to, you know, it, it's, it's fine jewelry. And on top of that, like it's mm-hmm. art. If, 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 if you don't want to play the game, don't play the game. I have a hot question for you. Is jewelry a waste of money? Absolutely. <laughs> it's a waste of money, but it depends. So, but look, I have a car that's a waste of money. I don't need it. But you know what? When I pull up to a fucking anywhere I pull up, everyone looks. It's marketing. People are like, who is that? What's going on? So, like, you have to look at it like that. People, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a rapper and you're buying jewelry, you want people to look at you and say, okay, you know, this guy's getting money. He's doing something. You know, what, what does mm. he do? It, 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 it pops up that it, it's a question, you know? I, I got another one for you. You mentioned just before then that the jewelry was art. Uh, I was just having a bit of a scroll before and I saw Rachel Goatley. What's the go Rachel with that? Go- so let me tell you something. So Rachel Goatley started as my assistant and she is now – my creative partner. Bam. She basically, she basically runs the show here. I'm, I'm over here. I'm in cruise control. I got my feet up in the air, and she's, she's, she got the driver's seat. Was that her in the background? Why? Ordering cake before? You wanna, Rachel, you want to say hi, Rachel? Hi, guys. Hey, big what fans. Do you guys, what do you guys want from her? I don't say what do you want from her. What do you guys want from her? Man, I'm, I'm, looking at that, I'm looking at that jumper. That's sick. I love that. No, Rachel, Rachel's been godsend to me, man. She's been making everything so easy for me. She's fucking awesome. Watch out. We got some cool stuff that we're working on right now, so stay tuned. Um, you know, she's just a, she's just on a different level. This girl is just, she, they're not ready for her is what I'm saying. And I, I feel bad given, you know, they, they're not going to understand her right now. It's going to take them some time. By the time they get it, it'll be over. No, I love that. I, I um I love the work and the, yeah, it's 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 another form of art and it's almost using this art that we've been talking about for a little while now, uh, and turning it into more art. And I love the uh, the way that uh, Rachel uses the different watch parts and includes she, them. She, in the she, she's, she's she's a different she's a different type of artist, man. She just she sees it, you know, and it's yeah. it's very hard to it's very hard to find someone who who understands. 
and and who's you know she uh she actually she inspires me so it's like you know she comes up with these things and it's like i'm like you know what it's it's nice to be able to work with somebody side by side like that who gets it it makes it makes things just it's like a puzzle piece hmm. you know so you've got that, that one yeah. puzzle piece that, you know when, when when it's those hard puzzles when they're all like it's all baby blue yeah um, yeah, yeah and and you, you, it's just like you, you're looking at the puzzle like what what the what is this shit? I found I found that 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 piece. Is what I'm saying. So you've got everything set up. You've got uh, and what what does the future have for you now? Given that you've got the dream team around you. I I mean, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna start collaborating with people. I'm trying to open up a store in. Um, I'm actually not trying. I'm I'm working on opening up a store in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. In, in the win, we're gonna see how that works out. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I feel like there's no limit, you know, like there's no limit to, to where we are. Mm. There's just so much to do, not with just with the jewelry. There's just so much other stuff that we can do. You know, I'm, I'm, I wanted to really get it into people's homes, you know, frame the stuff and get it into people's houses. Yeah. The thing, I mean, I think in sort of, for me, like you were saying before, like Rishon Mill, is that around forever? I sort of think the same with luxury streetwear. Do you think luxury streetwear is around forever, or is it a is it going to be gone? I think it's it'll be around forever. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 it's, it's, it's here. It's it's here. You know what I mean? Yeah, New, York, New York New York will forever have a new baby. You know, there's always something new coming up. There's always some. There's always new brands. There's always some new shit going on. So like. This is the birth of, of everything. Yeah, no, that's cool. All right, well, let's uh, we're gonna we're gonna fire off a few more questions at you, uh, specifically around customization work. I want to know what your favorite uh, watch to customize is, and what the most popular request is that you get. I mean, right now the the car, the, the popular ones are the Cartiers, the the Santos. It's really, yeah, cool. They're, they're on fire right now. And, you know, they weren't so popular about a year ago, and now they're just, like, on fire. Why is that? I, I don't know. It just, it's the thing. It's a trend. And they're is nice. It? And they're nice. They the skeleton nice. ones are so they're, they're sick. Yeah, they're really lovely watches. The skeleton stuff has been making its, yeah. like, way through the, you know. Yeah, they've, they've, they've toned it down a bit, and it's a, lot, it's a lot sleeker these days, I think. Yeah. Probably a little bit more accessible than, I guess, you know, we've – talked around the hype a little bit but what I would love to hear from you as someone who works with sort of uh, pieces that are on the marketplace has your supply chain uh, has it has it gotten a lot difficult gotten more difficult lately getting pieces like AP and Rolex and Patek I mean everything went up I mean the gold prices are up you know every Mm -hmm. so the Pateks and and the APs you know every like the limited ones people are taking them and they're icing them out right guys like me we fucking in the market you get a limited <laughs> hundred watches, right? Patek puts out a hundred, whatever. Let's just say fifty nine eighties, hypothetically yep. speaking. You know, fifty of them get iced out. There's fifty left. Those fifty are through the roof because those are through mm-hmm. the roof. The iced out ones are through the roof. So it's just I'm, you know, guys like me are just fucking up the market. I don't know what we're gonna do. They need to fire me. <laughs> I don't know. So you could st- you can still get the pieces. It's just you have to pay a little bit more if you want to. Yeah, everything is like you know. It's you know people like rarity. It's just rare. Yeah. So you know the rare it is, and you know it's it's just cost more. Yep. All right. Uh, one thing we ask all of our guests is uh, if they've got any recommendations of things they've been either watching, listening to, or reading. Um, doesn't have to be watch or jewelry related, but just maybe how you've been killing the very small amount of spare time that you have. Can I be honest with you? Yeah, go on. I haven't had any spare time at all. I'm I'm ready to pass out right now. <laughs> I don't do. I'm 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 literally on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's no spare time for me. You know. It, is it worth the hustle? Is it worth it? I mean, it's just the way I'm wired. You know, I have ADHD. Yeah. I feel like this is a beautiful place for me. You know, I'm New I, York. Yeah, you know, like the, the, I remember dropping out of high school and my friends were going to college and I'm like, fuck, what am I gonna do? I don't even know what I want to do. I know how to roll blade. Who rollerblades? Nah. <laughs> you know, I can't dance. I can't sing. You know, I was like, what, what, what's my like, what's my thing? And how did I you find your thing? It, what, it just, it just came. And when I, when I, when I knew what it was, I felt like I, I don't consider it work. It's not work, but I'm working, what but is, it's not. 
So what advice would you have for, for someone, for a young sort of, you know, 15, 16 year old boy or girl that finds himself in that predicament? Live in your parents' house as long as you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Andy Green, that is the right advice, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, if your parents are cool with you and you don't have problems with them you know what i mean hopefully everybody's getting along with their parents stay there as long as you can save your money take advantage and fucking eat that free food in in, in the refrigerator that is the <laughs> best you advice home, you know, so I, got this, I live alone i got this nice i not live alone i live with my um my trainer love that yeah, guy what i'm saying is i got a nice beautiful place there's no food in the refrigerator i feel bad when people come over it's embarrassing <laughs> I love that, love that. Love that. Shopping. Amazon, even when I order Amazon, I don't pick it up from the downstairs fucking concierge. It sucks. That's my <laughs> life. <laughs> okay, and what about for the next generation of uh, of jewelers, the next, you know, Greg Uners in the making? Are there any? Oh, I don't know. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm, just just kidding. Kidding. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm just kidding. Listen, the Rachel Goatleys of the world. What, I mean, what listen, advice do you give? I feel like I'm in the lane of my own. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm sure I inspire a lot of people. I hope I do. Hundred percent. And you know, if 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 I'm 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 all about it. You know, there was somebody I used to look up to as well. You know, when I got into the industry, and you know, I feel like everybody needs a target. A target is very necessary. Yeah. So I don't mind being a target, but I just want them to know that I'm working. Well, uh, Greg, there can only be one number one draft pick, right? I mean, there's no more rules. I love it. I love it. Well, Greg, thank you so much for chatting. We'll link up uh, your Instagram, your page, Chapter 2, Rachel Goatley, uh, and we'll... Uh, Rachel Goatley! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll have to get Rachel on at some point. Uh, you let me know. Her, uh, it yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've been following for a long time. So, she uh, is on mate, you guys, man. She's on, she is on fire and not because she's with me he's on part two part two we'll get her back thank you so much felix i need another coffee uh although i'm not sure if i do after that chat that was roller coaster (laughs) that was fun um what a guy like let's remember it's sort of friday afternoon so we're waking up he's he's wrapping up uh, no he's not wrapping up for the week he's 24 7 he's he's just getting ready for the next week it's, it pays off. That's really cool to kind of keep in contact uh, with someone like that and see them progress over the years and sort of you can tell throughout that, that he's a hardworking guy and, and, and ambitious and motivated and he's just found that thing that works for him. Yeah. Um, for me, though, imagine the stories he'd tell if he wasn't being recorded. That's what I'd just imagine. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine oh. the stories. Oh, it's, yeah, it's it's sick. Like, what, what a guy. How lucky are we to kind of get someone like that to, to join our uh, OT podcast alum. Hashtag humbled, hashtag blessed. Mm, much blessed. We'll link up everything that we talked about, of course. And I think we have to get Rachel Goatley on because I'm really keen to hear more about what she's up to. Yeah, that looks cool. Anyway, um, we've got to go. It's I, I, I want to go back to bed, to be honest. Um, I need another coffee. Yeah, man. So. If Instagram. you want to come on the show, if you've got a great guest to recommend. If, if, if you you're watch, uh, a gem setter to the stars, you can email us. If you want to gem set us some watches, if you want to get your watch match made uh, and it's got diamonds in it, or if you just want to drop us a line, otthepodcast at gmail.com. If you want to do it in the new school way and just slide into our DMs, it's ot.podcast. And thank you to our sponsors. Yeah. Support us, support the boys uh, by supporting our sponsors. And thank you to Major Tom Media for putting this together. We're sorry in advance for this far. Uh, and always, thank you for listening. Thank you for the reviews. Thank you for telling your mates. Uh, stop saying thank you, Andy. I think we just got to go now. We've got to, you've got to hit stop. We've got to say goodbye blessed. to everyone. Hashtag blessed. See you later. Drip, drip. Drip, drip.